Okay, guys, I'm going to walk you through how to get your trading view set up really, really quickly. The very first thing you want to do is type trading view into your search engine. Once you're there, you're going to link this with your um, with your Google account or your Facebook account. Once you've done that, you can use either use the free or you can get the 30 day trial or you can purchase the Pro Plus account. If you don't have the money, just do the 30 day free trial or the free or the or the free and just go from there. Once you get the money, then you can do the Pro Plus, but we're not going to worry about that. Once you are in, you're going to link it with your Google account and then it's going to take you to a screen that looks like this. Up at the top, you're going to see several things. You're going to click charts. Once you click charts, also make sure that it is actually linked so that when you come back, you can sign in with that Google account. Once you click charts, it's going to take you to a screen that looks like this. Now, if you want everything to stay white, then don't change anything. However, if you want a black themed background, then click your three lines here. Go to dark color theme, pull your button over to the right, and now it changes everything. Now, if you are like me and you want a really, really dark, dark background, you're either going to click your settings wheel here where you see chart properties, or you can just right click in your screen and go to settings. And instead of gradient, click solid, go here, and you're gonna click the darkest black. Now, I see these little lines behind here and I want those off. I'm gonna go click my vertical grid line. I'm gonna pull the opacity all the way to the left until it says 0%. I'm going to do the same thing with my horizontal grid line. Now, in terms of how my candles look, I don't like the pale color. I'm going to go to symbols here. Now, all of these represent what makes up the buy candles, and all of this makes up the sell candles. I don't like this color, so I'm going to change it. Now, if there is a color in the palette that you've been given that you don't like, you can add a color. These are all custom colors that I've put and added to my chart. So if I don't like that color, I will click this plus symbol to add a, another color. I will move this into the color family that I want. I still want my buy candles to be green. And then I'll move the little circle all the way over to what I would like as my green candles, okay? Once I found the color that I like, all I do is press add. And look, that color is down there. Okay. Now I'm going to make everything that makes up my buy candle that color green. I'm going to do the same thing with my cell candles because I don't like that pale red. I'm going to pick a color that I've already added. And there, that makes up my cell candle. Now, over here, I have a price line, and I'm gonna show you how to change those colors if that's the color that you want to change. If you go to appearance and you go to scale text here, I should have done that when I was on here. You click here and click white. See how that changes? I can make it yellow, I can make it red, I can make it green, but for now, I'm just gonna make it white. Once I've Put my chart properties the way that I want them. I click template, name it, and save it. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now, up here, you don't have all of these time frames, all you probably have is a D. So, when you click on the D, and once I've added these, I'll have a drop down. You'll have a drop down. These are the time frames that I like to look at price. One minute, the three, the five, I've added the 10 minute. You won't have that, but you can add the 10 minute. 15, the 30, one hour, four hour, the day, the week, and the month. I'm going to star these. Anytime you star something on TradingView, it's going to automatically be set for you to see it whenever you pull your chart up. So go ahead and star these. All you have to do is hover and you'll see the star. 
Now, once you've added all of your time frames, I'm gonna have you add some candles, some variations of candles. Now, most people start off looking at regular Japanese candles. I'd like for you to click bar style and I'd like for you to start Hakanashi candles. If you purchase the Pro Plus account, also star your Rinko. With your Hakanashi, I'm gonna leave mine the pale color because I always wanna know when I'm looking at Hakanashi versus candlesticks, okay? And we'll talk about the difference between the two later. The next thing I want you to do, I want you to get rid of this volume indicator. If you hover over it, you'll see the eye that allows you to hide the indicator or look at the indicator. You'll see the settings wheel that will allow you to change the input and style of the indicator. And then you'll see the X that tells you to remove the indicator. We are going to remove the indicator. And then I'm gonna give you several indicators that I think you should put on your chart. And the way that you're gonna add your indicators is go up here to FX and it should say indicators and strategies. The very first indicator that you're going to put in here is your MACD. M-A-C-D. When you put that in there, I would like for you to scroll down until you get to MACD 4C signal line squatter. I want you to star it and I want you to click it one time. If you click it multiple times, it's gonna be on your chart multiple times. So click it one time and one time only. You are not gonna change any of the settings or the inputs for your MACD. The second thing that I would like for you to add on here is E-M-A, and then I want you to actually use the symbol and, which is shift seven, and type in M-A. So you're going to type in E-M-A and M-A, and I want you to star E-M-A and M-A crossover, and then click E-M-A and M-A crossover. Finally, I would like for you to add M-O-V-I-N-G, moving average. You are going to click moving average exponential and star it. Now, I'm only giving you three indicators because you can only put three indicators on your free account. However, you are more than welcome to get with me and I'll go over other indicators that you can add later on, okay? So now let's change the settings for your EMA and MA crossover. Remember the eyeball, the settings wheel, this is where you want to go. Go to inputs, change your length for your MA to four and your length for your EMA to 50. All you have to do is hover or highlight, press four. Highlight, press 50. Then you're going to go to style. You can change your style to be whatever you want. When I first started, all of my moving average uh, MAs were, were green. These were red and it could be whatever color you want it to be. Once you have found the colors that you like for your style, and also you can also change the thickness of the color down here, the thickness of the line rather down here. You're gonna click whatever thickness works for your eyes, and then you're gonna save it as default and press okay. I would like for you to go to EMA here, click your settings, input. I would like for your EMA to be 200. Press style. I'm gonna make this white. Put the thickness of the line that you prefer. And then you can save it as default and press okay. And now I'm gonna ask you to hide it just to keep it out of the way because we don't need to use these right now. So press the I or both of these and hide them on your screen. Now, here is what I would like for you to do. I would like for you to go to indicators template to the left of the clock here. 
click and I want you to save that indicator as the 50 and the four, and then you're going to press save. Now let's talk about your watch list. Your watch list does not look like my watch list. I want you to get rid of your watch list. All you have to do is when you go up here, go to the right and X out everything. If you have a free account, then you won't be able to have multiple watch lists. The way that you're gonna add your watch list in is you're going to go and press this add symbol and then you're gonna click, make sure that you're on all and you're gonna put in all of your 4X major and minor pairs. And you can Google that on your own. Yes, you can. Just go to Google and type in 4X pairs. And then you're gonna come here. When you add them in, you're going to separate them by a comma. So if I'm doing odd NZD, which is the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar, I'm going to press comma and then I'm going to press space, odd USD, space, um, GBP, JPY, comma, space. Now, once I've added everything that I want to add, I'm not going to press enter here. I'm actually going to press enter on my keyboard and then you will see these populate over here. Okay, guys, this is how you use your tools. You have a toolbar over here that will allow you to mark and chart and write on your screen. The very first tool that I want you to get familiar with is the trend line tool. Notice I have these starred because I use these quite often. And then here down at the bottom, I have a shortcut for my tools. Your trend line, if I click here, my trend line will allow me to draw a trend line. If it's not where I want it, all I have to do is grab it from the top, pull it where I want it to go, stretch it out some more, or shorten it, or turn it the other way. So you have the option to move your trend line however you need to move it, just knowing that it's gonna make a straight line. I can grab it and I can move it all together over or under how I want it to go. If it's not what I need, then I'll just hit the trash can and get rid of it. If I want to change the color, I just click it, come here, and then now I can go into my rainbow of colors and I can change it to be whatever color I want it to be. And then I can go here and I can change it to be either a very thin line or a very, very thick line. It's all up to you. Now, one of the other tools that I like to draw a trend line with is my arrow because I want my trend to remind me, oh, it's an uptrend. Or if I am going in a downtrend, then I can draw my arrow pointing down. Show me, oh, I'm in a downtrend. So those are the two tools that I definitely want you to become familiar with. And if you don't need it, click it and throw it away. Horizontal lines are great for drawing your support and your resistance lines. It shows me where price typically likes to come to and reverse in either direction. I can either use the horizontal line or I can use the horizontal ray. And once again, I can change this to be whatever color I want it to be and whatever thickness I want it to be. You have options here. Another tool that I like to use is my brush. Now, let me get rid of this. And the way that you get rid of all of the drawings is you right click and remove drawings. Now, here is another tool I like, my paintbrush. With my paintbrush, I can draw however I need to draw on my canvas and it stays locked. So if there's something I'm trying to take a look at and I wanna circle that, I can. I can just kind of, but just know that it's not gonna give you crisp straight lines, which is why I like the trend line. Once again, if I wanna get rid of everything, remove drawings. Next under here is my highlighter. 
where I can just go in and I can highlight an area. Here's one of my favorite tools. It's my pathway tool. To use the pathway tool, click and drag, click and pull, click and pull, click and pull, click and pull. This is great when it comes to finding your flag patterns or your higher highs. If I click here and I can go from the low to the high, to the low, the high, to the low, to the high, and double click to let it go and make it stop, I can use my path tool. Another one of my favorites is my rectangle. I can go to different areas in the market where I can see potentially where price will return to as it did here. And I can draw a rectangle around here. Now the rectangle is very interesting because if I go here and I click the color line tool and I pull the opacity all the way over. I have the perimeter of it that just popped out. I can change the inside color. I can change the outside color. It's totally up to you. The Eclipse is another one that I like. And I might take a look at my MACD and you'll learn how to use your MACD and know that I have a retest here which shows me right there. And so I can pull this to show me different areas that I just kind of want to circle and see. So make sure that you're practicing with your tools. Once you learn harmonic patterns, your ABX ABCD tool is great for harmonic patterns. And you can draw your harmonic patterns rid of them here. Now, if there was ever a time I wanted to just kind of put something on my chart, like I want to know, like, is there money sitting somewhere? I might put that right there, right? And I can change the color on uh, the visibility um, here as well. Once I'm done, I can get rid of it. Now, let's say you want to draw a whole lot of, let's say you want to draw quite a few horizontal lines and you don't want to keep coming back to click. All you have to do is click here where it says stay in drawing mode, click whatever it is you want. And every time you click, you'll see that you'll, you'll have a line right there. Once you find the tools that you like, and I let me not leave out my little fib, fib retracement tool is right here. Once you find a tool that you like, and again, you can create your shortcut here and have your tools in place. So that concludes the trading view walkthrough. If you have any questions, please make sure that you reach out to me or you can reach out to anyone in the community in Discord. Until then, God bless you and I will see you in the market.